ليون قديشا دما وراني شوم شيحا كارزو ثا اد مرقوس Now when the Pharisees gathered together to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands defiled, that is unwashed. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with hands defiled? And he said, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, and as, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold fast to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother what you have gained from me is qurban that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tra tradition which you hand on and many such things you do. And Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me all of you and understand, there is nothing outside a man which by going into him can defile him, but defile him. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and so passes on? Thus he declared all foods clean. And Jesus said, What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within and out of the heart of man come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a man. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we call upon your blessed mother now as we prepare this week for her feast day of the Assumption. We ask that she would be with us in this Mass to help us to praise and to worship you, Lord, the way she would. We ask that you would open our minds and our hearts to receive all the things that we need in this Mass so that we can be faithful Christians and faithful sons of daughters. And so together we pray, Hail Mary, Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paul says in today's letter, Though we live in the world, we are not carrying on a worldly war. Though we live in the world, we are not carrying on a worldly war. We are in the midst of a war. And not necessarily a war that is with soldiers or an army, a physical army, physical soldiers, but there is a war, a spiritual war going on every single day and a battle for our souls between heaven and hell between God and the devil. 
This is the war that we are in. This is the war that St. Paul talks about. And so who are we fighting against in our life? The church tells us that there are three sources of evil in our lives. The world, the flesh, and the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil. These are the three sources of evil that we are fighting against constantly in our lives. Devil comes from the Greek word diablos, which means the one who divides. The one who divides. If you've ever planned a wedding, you know very well the power of the devil. The one who divides. Because when you're sitting and planning, the number one thing the devil wants is for you to be divided from your fiance and for you to be divided from your spouse. But the devil works in a number of ways to try to divide us. Whether it's to divide you from your spouses, from your family, from your cousins, your aunts and your uncles, your friends, to divide marriage, to divide families and households. This is his task, what he is trying to do. St. James says, submit yourselves to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. I love what St. Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians and I'm going to read it to you, just three verses. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I'll never forget my first day of seminary. It was August 23rd, 2012. And we were all gathered, all of us new seminarians. We went into the chapel and we were all confused. We didn't know what was happening. It was the first day. I had just seen my mom crying the entire day as she dropped me off. And we got into the chapel and we're sitting there and the priest walks in, one of the head priests. And the very first words that he said to us, we're new seminarians. The very first word he said to us was this. He looks at us, he points at us, and he says, the devil hates you, he doesn't want you here, and so men, welcome to the army. And so what I want to say to you today is the devil hates each and every one of you. He hates and he despises each and every one of you. The devil does not want you sitting in this church. The devil does not want you here. The devil does not want you to have faith or love for God, so welcome to the army. Welcome to God's army. By sitting here, you are a soldier for Christ. You are a part of God's army. And so where is your heart? Are you the soldier who fights or are you the soldier who sits back at the camp and is afraid to go out and fight? afraid of the world. Where is your heart? Jesus said in the gospel to the Pharisees and the scribes when they're questioning him, he says, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. He said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And so do we honor God with our lips, yet our heart is far from him? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to fight. Do not be afraid to go into the spiritual battle. Why? Because we have weapons. I'm not talking about AK-47s, AR-15s, right? Not talking about those things. But we have divine weapons, spiritual weapons. St. Paul says in the letter, the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but have divine power to capture and destroy strongholds. And so what are our weapons? How can we be good soldiers of Christ? 
I think there's really four main weapons we have. The Eucharist, confession, our Blessed Mother Mary, and prayer. First of all, the Eucharist. St. John Bosco says, visiting the Blessed Sacrament, which is the tabernacle, is essential if you want to overcome the devil. Therefore, make frequent visits to Jesus. If you do that, the devil will never prevail against you. Confession. Confession, every confession, if we confess with our whole hearts, is more powerful than an exorcism. More powerful than an exorcism. Imagine what a confession does to your soul. It cleans you. It cleanses you. It sets you free. Jesus said to St. Faustina, when you approach the confessional, remember that it is me who sits there. It's not the priest. It's not the priest. I'm sitting there as an instrument of God's mercy, but it's God who is forgiving you. Jesus who is forgiving you. Mary. During an exorcism, there was a chief exorcist in Rome. His name is Father Amorth. And the devil spoke through this person to this priest, and the devil said to him, if Christians knew how powerful the Hail Mary was, it would be the end of my existence. The saints tell us that every time we pray a Hail Mary, the floors of hell shake. Why? Because Mary was the only person the devil could not get to. She is the Immaculate Conception. She is the one without sin. And so when we pray for her intercession, when we ask for her help, the demons tremble because she's the holiest of women, the most blessed of women. I had never prayed the rosary really before seminary, just a couple times if it was with my family or in adoration. And when we first got to seminary, they had us pray the rosary together every single day. And I promise you, when I would go to sleep, I could literally feel something standing in front of my bed. And I had a deep experience knowing that that was the Blessed Mother, that it was her standing there. It was her protecting me. Prayer. Never tire of fighting. Never give up. Don't quit on the war. Because when we do that, we give the devil power over us over our families, over our lives. And so that's why it's important for us to keep fighting. In regards to prayer, there's two devotions that I love very much. The first is the devotion to the three Hail Marys. It's a prayer of just praying three Hail Marys for purity, that God would keep us pure. It's something that we need to practice more. And the second is the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. The tradition tells us that it was St. Michael who thrust the devil into hell because the devil was an angel. He was one of God's strongest angels. And so we pray to St. Michael. But I want you to listen to this quote from this book called The Spiritual Combat that I was reading yesterday. And it says this from the author. It does not matter how weak you are or how strong the devil may seem. Do not be discouraged. The help you have from heaven is more powerful than all that hell can send to destroy the grace of God in your soul. God the Creator and the Redeemer is almighty and He is more desirous of your salvation than the devil can be of your destruction. Wow. God desires our salvation more than the de devil desires our destruction. Think about that. And so when we're struggling in our lives, with anxiety, with depression, with stress, with division in our families, with a lack of peace, when we constantly feel a tightness on our hearts, on our chests, and no matter what we do, it doesn't go away, come to Jesus. Jesus talks about what defiles a man. Anger, adultery, licentiousness, lust, wickedness, gossip, slander. If we struggle with those things, we need to come to Jesus. We need to come to Him. 
I've seen profound experiences of people who come to Jesus, especially through confession. Maybe they've had anxiety, depression, stress for many years, and the minute they go to confession, it's gone. Because a true repentant heart, a true confession is more powerful than an exorcism. God can do wondrous things for us. And so my brothers and sisters, the decision today is up to you. Who will your heart belong to? Who will rule your life? Will it be God or will it be the devil? The choice is up to you. And so together, if you know the prayer, I ask that you pray it with me. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us all stand well with joy and gladness, and let us implore and say, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We pray for all priests throughout the world, that while administering and celebrating the holy sacraments, they help others grow in love and devotion to Jesus Christ. We implore you. Lord, have mercy on us. We pray for an increase in trust in the goodness.